Hi there, thank you so much for joining our discussion on James chapter 3 today. And we're in the middle of a series called Vital Signs. The book of James is such an amazing book where it looks at how our faith can be living and active. And welcome David and Nikki for joining me for today's discussion. Yeah. Um, and if you've been joining the series, please also look out for the sermon that Pastor Jay will be preaching about taming the tongue, which is the first part of James chapter 3. And today we're going to be focusing on the second half of James chapter 3. Um, so do you want to take a moment, David, and just read us a couple of verses from James chapter 3? Yeah, sure, definitely. So the second half actually speaks about wisdom. And I'm going to be reading chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. This is what he says. I hope you have your Bibles out. Um, if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth by boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Sure things are earthly, such things are earthly, unspiritual and demonic. For wherever there is je jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But wisdom from above is first all pure. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. Mm. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. Wow, there's a lot in there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I want to encourage you if you're in a life group together, if you can take some time maybe to take it verse by verse and just really unpack it and share with one another um, what you see in that passage. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think the link is really between our words, which yeah. is in the first part of, of yep. James, and the second one is that our words should be used for positive, for sharing wisdom rather mm -hmm. than the negative things. Mm -hmm. And the, the health check that we've kind of linked it to is when you go and see the doctor, uh, usually one of the first things that they'll do is they'll ask you to stick out your tongue mm. and say, ah, right? Yeah. They'll have a look at the back of your throat. Yeah. Um, but they can also see a whole lot of your health by what's going on with your tongue. That's right. um, yeah. I just remember when I was a kid, um, if you had one of those sweets, did you ever have it, that experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 bombs. Yeah. It changes the like, color of your tongue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I used to wonder, why did my mom know that I'd been eating something, you know? Yeah. Meanwhile, there's the your evidence there on your tongue. Yeah. And I thought, wow, mom knows all things. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. So so what stands out for you guys from this passage as we, as we start considering James chapter 3? Mm. Yeah. So I really like how it tells us what wisdom is not. It mm. tells us that it's not jealousy. It's not... Uh, uh, disorder, disorderly and all of that. And it tells us that it actually is, it tells us what it actually is, which is good deeds, which is truthfulness, gentleness, and all of that. And I really like the way the Bible just, you know, defines it and tells you what true wisdom is mm. and what you should expect from people who share true wisdom. Mm. I think that's really helpful. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think for me, it's it's discerning the difference between knowledge and and wisdom. Um, knowledge can simply be just knowing. I think any of us can sort of do a research on a subject and know what it's about. Mm. But wisdom is is discernment and um, making a good judgment, reading between the lines, mm. um, seeing things beyond as what they just appear. Mm. Um, as a mom, it's knowing that my child's not just fussy. What's actually wrong with him? Could he be sick? Could it be a temperature? Yeah. It's just looking yes. beyond um, and James 3 gives us sort of a nice checklist um, to see that if you are wise, you would be peaceful, you'd be, have mercy, yeah. you would so consider others, it's like a nice little checklist that you can almost go through yeah. to know that you are being wise. And again, how the chapter says that you'll know someone is wise by how they live mm -hmm. and if they're living out a good life. I love that contrast between wisdom and knowledge. Mm. I think our world is quite obsessed with knowledge. Yes. Um, if you have a look at people who are spending a lot of money to get degrees, often people who've got a lot of knowledge sometimes have a, a bit of pride with right. that. You know, I've got a degree, you haven't, or yes. I'm a specialist in this field and you're not. Mm -hmm. um, where wisdom is not linked into IQ mm. and, and, and what you know. Mm but it's actually how you live. Right. And, and I think that that brings out a different element that your quality of your life is more of more value than the, 
qualifications you may right. have or in modern times the amount of info that you've accessed right. on the internet, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if we have a look at that contrast between wisdom and knowledge, mm. um, how, how can we look at that in gaining godly wisdom? Mm. You use the word discernment. Mm. He, what, what, what do you guys think we can do to develop that wisdom mm. and discernment that we need? Mm. Mm. I mean, we, we can gain knowledge and wisdom from so many sources, from our parents when we're younger, from leaders, from our pastors, from our teachers. Um, there's so many sources we can gain wisdom and knowledge from. Um, but I think it's also just a matter of sort of almost filtering it and sifting um, mm. like what, what does the word say wisdom actually is yeah. and is what I'm being taught in link with what the Bible is saying. Mm. So I think it's always going back to the word to actually see, is this the wisdom that I'm wanting to receive for my life? Mm. Is this the wisdom that I'm trying to live out as well? Mm. Yeah. And I think it also ties into your worldview. Right. And the philosophies, mm. there's a lot of philosophies out there. Yeah. True, uh, true. David, as a, as a young man, I'm sure you've been bombarded mm. with a whole lot of political philosophies and yeah. philosophies on dating. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and there's, a whole, there's a whole way of thinking that is promoted by Hollywood or pro promoted by politicians. Mm. Um, how do you as a young person sift through that, David? Mm. I think it's, uh, once again, as... Uh, Nikki has said, mm -hmm. it's all about looking at the Bible and comparing it to the philosophies that are out there in the world because the Bible is the truth. Mm -hmm. And if you're seeking true wisdom, then that's the first place to go. Mm -hmm. It also encourages us to ask God, mm -hmm. you know? So when it comes to worldly philosophies and all these things that we find on social media and stuff, it's, I, I do have to admit, it's easy to just consume that mm -hmm. and think that it's the truth. But when you actually dive into it and, uh, look into it carefully, you start to see the errors and you start to see how invaluable it is to your life. Mm. You know? So that's me. Do you want to maybe read a verse that you highlighted a little earlier? I think it's from yes. Colossians. Yes. So this is from Colossians 2 verse 8. And it says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Mm. Do you want to expand on that a bit? Yeah, again, we we exposed to so much. And like David said, it's easy to be consumed by what people are saying on Instagram yeah. or Twitter or Facebook. Uh, mm. uh, there's other, so many other stuff you yeah. could um, get consumed with. Um, but again, it's just linking it back to the word. Um, and because we are of this world, it's easy to, again, want to consume it because it's almost mm. easier um, um, and it almost accommodates us better it, it, it agrees with what we think mm. but is it agreeing with what god wants for us is it yeah. is it agreeing with what what god's word is mm. um again uh, the worldly philosophies really accommodate how we feel and what we want to feel mm. um but does it convict you enough to know what what is right and what is wrong and what god is saying mm. so, yeah. yeah, sometimes we just, we get into this place where we look on social media, and I'm speaking from a young man's perspective, where we receive information and we take it in because that's exactly what we want to hear. Mm. It's not yes. the actual truth. Right. And I think that's a trap that a lot of uh, young people fall into. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love the way that it says in James that if we lack wisdom, we should ask. And it says that God will give us wisdom. Mm. And I'm just finding um, as, as I've grown older and got more experience, I kind of thought things would get easier and easier. And in some ways they do. But I find that I'm asking for God's wisdom more and more mm. because I'm realizing the contrast between just going with my, you know, my own experience or what, I, what I'm thinking or what I've learned mm. versus actually getting God's wisdom and God's perspective. And I'm finding I'm asking him for wisdom on a daily basis, mm -hmm. wisdom in relationships, wisdom in work, wisdom in planning ahead. Mm -hmm. And he promises that when we ask him for wisdom, mm -hmm. he will give it to us. Yeah. 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 I think also just spending time in silence mm -hmm. um, and because everything around us is so loud. And I think mm -hmm. being intentional about taking time to, to be silent and asking God for that wisdom um, is also important. Again, that also goes with taming the tongue. Sometimes you just exactly. got to keep quiet mm. um, and remain silent to actually hear God's voice and the wisdom mm. he's trying mm. to give you. And I think that's such a valuable, um, it's actually a spiritual practice um, to spend time in silence. Um, very often we talk about a quiet time 
uh, where you'll take some time in your day to read God's word, to pray. And I think that's actually a very valuable thing to do is to actually incorporate a time of silence where you can actually say, God, I want to, I want to listen. I want to listen to you. I want to focus on you um, and, and spend that time in, in silence. So as we draw to a close, I just want to take a moment to, to focus on that beautiful image it gives us at the end of James chapter 3, where it says those that plant, plant will harvest. Mm -hmm. It talks about planting peace, mm -hmm. yeah. which is such a powerful concept that when we plant peace, that we will harvest righteousness. Mm -hmm. And it talks about wisdom from God is peace loving, right? And it says that we'll have peace. It is gentle. There's mercy. And that as we plant peace, mm -hmm. we will he reap a harvest of righteousness. Yeah. And again, that to me speaks of relationships. Yeah. That as we're seeking God's wisdom, as we're taking time to listen to him, mm -hmm. that we can plant seeds of peace. Peace in our own hearts mm -hmm. and peace in the hearts of other people mm -hmm. um, as we as we take God's word and apply it. And for me, James is such a beautiful chapter in that it encourages us to not just hear, mm. but to apply it. Mm. And so as we close today, that's my challenge for you today, is to consider what are the ways that you can plant peace mm. and trust that God will bring a harvest of righteousness. Mm. A couple of other challenges for you as we go into your week is to put a time of silence into your day, into your time that you spend with God regularly. Mm. And then also to have a look at the book of Proverbs. Um, some people talk about the book of James being like the Proverbs of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs in the Old Testament is such a valuable book of wisdom. There are 31 chapters in Proverbs. Some people like to choose one chapter of Proverbs a day and read it on a continual basis. Uh, whether you choose one proverb or one chapter of Proverbs, mm -hmm. I want to encourage you to take the book of Proverbs and get to know God's Word and apply it in our lives. Thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you, David. And thank you for joining us. And if you're in a group setting, I hope that you're going to take some time to dig into the word, speak and share with one another what stands out for you. And then most importantly, take some time to take your next step. What are you going to do this week to apply it to your lives? Mm. Have a blessed week.